بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على خير خلق الله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لو لم يبق من الدنيا إلا يوم لطول الله ذلك اليوم حتى يبعث فيه رجلا مني أو من أهل بيتي يواتئ اسمه اسمي واسم أبيه اسم أبي يملأ الأرض قسطا وعدلا كما يملأ ظلما وجورا أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام الحمد لله over the past two weeks or so we have been talking about Imam Mahdi عليه السلام and we have studied the basics regarding Imam Mahdi عليه السلام such as what his name will be and that Mahdi is a title which means the rightly guided one and his actual name will be Muhammad the son of Abdullah he will be from the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam from the descendants of Hazrat Fatima and that too from Hazrat Hassan's side his father will be the descendant of Hazrat Hassan and his mother will be the descendant of Hazrat Hussein so Imam Mahdi himself will be a Sayyid, a family member of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And last week we mentioned a few physical attributes of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam, such as how he will have a prominent nose and he will have a broad or shiny forehead. He will be born in Medina Munawwara as mentioned in one narration and he will be between 30 to 40 years old when he will emerge as the Mahdi. And then we said, how will his emergence come about? It will be that there will be a Khalifa, a ruler who will die, and then at the time there will be a dispute. Who should be the next ruler? Who should be the next leader? And Imam Mahdi will flee from Medina Munawwara to Mecca Mukarramah, to avoid being appointed this leader in fear but in Mecca when he reaches there there will be people who will recognize him they will recognize him through his name through his father's name through his lineage and he will eventually be appointed the leader people will pledge their allegiance to him between the Hajri Aswad and the Maqam Ibrahim which is next the two corners between two corners of the Kaaba in Mecca Mukarramah And then we mentioned that Imam Mahdi will be opposed by a person known as the Sufyani. A person from the descendants of the companion of the Prophet ﷺ, Hazrat Abu Sufyan. And this person, the Sufyani, he will have a particular hatred towards the members of the family. The family members of the Prophet ﷺ, he will kill all the members of Banu Hashim so when he will find out about the emergence of Mahdi and that he too is from the family of Prophet ﷺ he will send an army and this army will reach a plain a plain field a barren land between Mecca Mukarramah and Medina Munawwara and it is at this time where a, a miracle will occur a sign for everyone to witness and that will be that the earth will swallow the army of Sufyani all those people will be swallowed by the earth that came to oppose Imam Mahdi and only one or two people will survive the good news will be given to Imam Mahdi and the bad news will be given to Sufyani that your army has been swallowed by the earth so when this news reaches the Abdal of Sham Abdal these are a type of people very pious people they is said that there are only seven of them or there are 40 of them throughout the whole world and majority of them are in Sham and they are called Abdal because the word Abdal comes from the word Badal and Badal means to change something so the reason they are called Abdal is because every time one of them dies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appoints another person in their place he gives them this status and this role okay So when the Abdal of Sham hear that this army has been swallowed by the earth, they will come, they will pledge their allegiance to Imam Mahdi, the people of Iraq, groups of Iraq, they will come and they will pledge their allegiance to Imam Mahdi alayhi salam as well. 
okay so that's where we last talked up to now today we're going to start the sitting with mentioning those who will come to the aid of Imam Mahdi those who will assist Imam Mahdi those who at a point will oppose the Sufyani as well so we can see this through <coughs> certain narrations so today or we are going to be talking about them so the first narration is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that يَخْرُجُ نَاسٌ مِنَ الْمَشْرِكِ فَيُوَطِّعُونَ لِلْمَحْدِي أَيْ سُلْطَانَهُ That some people will emerge from the east and they will pave the way for Imam Mahdi alayhi salam i.e. from his room. So from this the first thing that we learn is that these people are going to be from the east. That's what we learn from this narration. And there is a, another more detail in Ibn Majah Sharif and uh, Imam Hakim has also narrated a similar hadith in his book. Where it is said, Hazrat Abdullah says, that if Aqbala fityatum min bani Hashim, Falamma ra'ahum al Nabiu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Igrawra kat aynahu wa taghayyara launuhu. It is said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Imam Hakim gives more detail. He says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one time he was extremely happy, the joy could be seen on his face and the Sahaba, sahaba Kiram they were asking him questions and he was answering all their questions and then he sees a group of youngsters from the Bani Hashim. Now Bani Hashim, who are Bani Hashim? If we know the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and if we know his family tree then we will know that Muhammad, he is the son of Abdullah, he is the son of Abdul Muttalib, he is the son of Hashim. So the Prophet Sallallahu great-grandfather is called Hashim. So all those beneath Hashim, so this includes all the uncles of the Prophet Sallallahu all the sons of Hashim, all these are known as the Banu Hashim. They are all known as the family members of the Prophet Sallallahu so the Prophet ﷺ saw a few members of the Banu Hashim, meaning his own family members. And amongst them, Imam Hakim says, was Hazrat Hassan and Hazrat Hussein, and he hugged them both. Uh, but when he saw this group, his eyes began to tear up. There were tears in his eyes. And the colour of his face changed. He was upset. There was something that was worrying him. The Sahaba Kiram, when they saw this, the, the narrator says that I asked Prophet Sallallahu that we are seeing something continuously on your face which we dislike. It is as if you are in some agony, some pain, something is upsetting you and this is making us uncomfortable. Ya Rasulullah, what is the matter? Tell us. So that's when the Prophet ﷺ said that inna ahlu baytin. We are the family members. We are the ahli bayt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen the hereafter for us over the worldly life. And وَإِنَّ أَهْلِ بَيْتِي سَيَلْقُونَ بَعْدِي بَلَاءً وَتَشْرِيدًا وَتَفْرِيدًا And my family members, they will face after me calamity. They will face expulsion. They will face exile. My family members. حَتَّى حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ قَوْمٌ مِّنْ قِبَلِ الْمَشْرِكِ مَأَهُمْ رَايَةٌ سُودِ Until a group of people come from the east. And with them there will be black banners or black flags. And they will ask for goodness. They will ask for goodness. They will ask for leadership. But they will not be given this role. They will not be given what they have asked for. So they will fight and they will be victorious. Eventually, after this fight, after being victorious, they will be given what they asked for, for that leadership, but now they are not going to accept it. They will not accept it. Now, they will not accept it until at one point they will give this role to a man from my family, from my household. فَيَمْلَأُهَا قِسْطًا كَمَا مَلَأُوهَا جُورًا فَمَنْ أَدْرَكَ ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ فَلْيَأْتِهِمْ وَلَوْ حَبْوًا أَلَى الثَّلْجِ So, this person when he is given this role of authority of leadership, he will fill the earth with justice as he had been previously filled with injustice and oppression. 
whoever amongst you is present at the time and finds this time and is alive at the time he should go to that person even if he has to crawl over ice and the meaning of this this phrase even if you have to crawl over ice is going to come in a few narrations so i'll explain it now it means no matter how much difficulty you have to go through even if you have to crawl over ice then you should go to the Mahdi you should leave no stone unturned to join the group of Imam Mahdi at the time so from this we learn another thing okay so we said that this group that's going to help Imam Mahdi they're going to be from the east and in this narration we're going we learn that they have with them black flags black banners so now we go to a third narration which gives us a bit more detail regarding this group where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, is narrated in Abu Dawood Sharif. He says that يَخْرُجُ رَجُلٌ مِنْ وَرَاءِ النَّهْرِ A person will emerge from مَا وَرَاءُ النَّهْرِ In English nowadays, I think it's called Transoxania. I don't know if I pronounce it right or not, but it is an area in Central Asia. Central Asia, and nowadays it constitutes of many different countries, uh, Uzbekistan. Uh, Kazakhstan and there's a few others uh, all the Khans at the end few countries about five countries they are okay so a person is going to come from there from that area Central Asia and he will be ca called Harith ibn Harras Harith the son of Harras and at the front of his army who will be leading his army will be a person called Mansur. And we learn this with another narration I'll mention after this, is Mansur is a title for this person. So at the front of this army will be a person called Mansur, that is going to be his title. يُوَتِّعُ أَوْ يُمَكِّنُ لِآلِ مُحَمَّدٍ they will pave the way for Imam Mahdi or they will establish matters, they will strengthen mat matters for Imam, for the family of the Prophet ﷺ, for the family member of the Prophet ﷺ, i.e. Imam Mahdi ﷺ. Just kama makkanat Quraysh li Rasulillah ﷺ, just as the Quraysh had strengthened matters for the Prophet ﷺ. Okay, so from this we learnt a new detail. So we said, East, Group's going to come from east, they're going to have black banners. Now we learn they're sent by a person called Haris, and at the front of the group, there is going to be a person called Mansur. Okay, and I'm just going to quickly explain the end bit of this hadith that this group they're going to aid the Prophet, they go, uh, they're going to aid Imam Mahdi, they're going to pave the way for Imam Mahdi, they are going to help him through wealth, through weapons, they are going to help him through their army eventually they're going to help him overcome his enemies okay whoever opposes him at the time just as the Quraysh helped the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so we know that the people of Mecca is common that uh, we know uh, that they in fact oppose the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam the Quraysh the Kuffar of Mecca but at the same time there were certain people from the Quraysh certain people from the family of the Prophet وسلم, who helped him, who consolidated him, who helped him through his mission. Some of them believers and some of them even non-believers. Okay, they say that blood is thicker than water. So they, was, they said, okay, look, we don't believe in his religion, but at the end of it all, he's still our, our family member. He's still related to us. So we are still going to help him until what happened, this is, I'm talking about the Prophet wasallam, that in the seventh Hijri, I'm just giving an example of how the Quraysh helped the Prophet wasallam, that the disbelievers, they wanted to cut the roots of Islam and they thought what better way than killing Prophet wasallam. But the reason they couldn't do this is because they knew if we kill Prophet wasallam, his family members, whether they are believers or disbelievers, they are going to retaliate. They're not going to take this. They're going to take revenge from us. So what they decided to do is they said that we are going to do a boycott. We are going to boycott all those who believe in the Prophet ﷺ and all those who assist the Prophet ﷺ, believers or non-believers. We are not going to trade with you. We are not going to get married to your daughters. Your daughters cannot marry our men. We are going to completely cut ties off. We don't even want to talk to you. And this 
boycott lasted for many years people were struggling through hunger they went through many difficult times and the condition that the disbelievers put that we will end this boycott when when you hand over the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you accept the fact that he will be killed and you are ready for him to be killed we will end the boycott at that time but despite this they struggled through many difficulties but they did not hand over the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they stuck by his side okay and a very well known example of this is the figure of abu talib the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who did not accept Islam but he helped the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam massively massively he stopped the enemy from attacking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he allowed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to complete his mission okay so this is how this army will help the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now carrying on with the description of this army Okay, so we learn that they are from Central Asia. Now we're going to get into a narration which tells us a bit more detail. It is said that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that when you see the black flags قَدْ جَاءَتْ مِنْ خُرَاسَانِ That when they have come from Khurasan, Okay, this is an area and I'll explain this in, in a minute. Then come to it, go to it. Because in there, there is the Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Mahdi. And in another narration in Tirmidhi Sharif, it is mentioned, تَخْرُجُ مِنْ خُرَاسَانِ رَايَةٌ سُودٌ لَا يَرُدُّهَا شَيْءٌ حَتَّى تُنْسَبُ بِإِلْيَا So this narration is mentioned in Tirmidhi Sharif. It is said that there will come forth black flags from Khurasan. And nobody will be able to stop them, nobody will be able be able to repel them nothing will be able to turn them away until they are planted in jerusalem so now we learn they are from khurasan so before we said east then we said central asia now we learn khurasan and again this is those few countries this includes part of iran and it includes afghanistan and uzbekistan and a few other countries that is where khurasan is from so from that area towards central asia that is where this army will come and will help the Prophet sallallahu uh, they will help Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. One last narration regarding this. And this is mentioned in, in Kanzul Ummal. It is said that when the army of Sufyani, the army of the Sufyani comes towards Gufa, they leave towards Gufa, then they will send, he will send an army in pursuit of the people of Khurasan, which we have just mentioned. And the people of Khurasan, they will leave and they will be searching for Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. Now what's going to happen on the way, this army from Khurasan, they will meet up with the Hashmis. And we said the Hashmis just now are those people from the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So these two armies are going to join together on the black, fl black flags, black banners. And they are now going to meet the army of Sufyani. And what's going to happen? This army of the Hashmi, of the people of Khurasan, they are going to be victorious. And the people of Sufyani, they are going to run away. And it will be at that time where the people will desire for Imam Mahdi and they will be searching for Imam Mahdi. So the conclusion of all of this is that there will be some black flags that will come from the east. They will come from towards Khurasan. They will aid and assist Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. So that is the conclusion from that. Obviously, not every group with black flags and that even come from that side can be labelled the army of Imam Mahdi. Many people have tried this in the past, even till today. You know, one example is the ISIS. You know, they have the black flags and where they are situated, one area is in Dabik, which we'll get to later on, in the, you know, certain armies decide to camp in Khurasan. Okay, so they use this and they say, okay, look, we are going to be that group one day. But Allah knows better. So, we now continue. Okay, from the narration we left off is that when this army of Sufyani comes, they're going to be swallowed by the earth. Now what's going to happen later on, the Prophet Sallallahu tells us that there will be a person from Quraysh that will arise and he will have maternal uncles from the tribe of Gulf. 
And this is referring to the Sufyani himself. So the Sufyani, when he hears that his army has been swallowed by the earth, usually if you hear something like that, there'll be a certain fear you'll have. You'll think, okay, you know what, I've messed with the wrong guy. What I'm doing is wrong. But he will not be affected by this news. He's going to think, you know what, I'm going to go with my own army now and I'm going to attack him again. So he's going to go again. And now, obviously, we've mentioned through different narrations as well that these two armies are going to fight and it is mentioned that then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant victory to the members of Imam Mahdi, Imam Mahdi and his army over the Sufyani and this is the expedition of Kalb and the Prophet sallallahu says that there is a loss, there is a disappointment, unfortunate is that person who is not present at that exped- expedition, who does not gain the booty of this skull. The Prophet ﷺ is trying to inspire people, whoever is present, who is going to be present at the time, that whatever you can do, try and be part of this war. Okay, and he will distribute the wealth and he will rule over the people according to the sunnah of the Prophet and Islam will place its neck upon the earth this is like a metaphor like we say we are over the moon so the same way this phrase that Islam will place its neck on the floor just like how a camel only places its neck on the floor when it is content, when it is happy, when there is no commotion. So the same way he's saying at that time Islam will prosper, there will be peace, there will be no commotion. And the Prophet ﷺ says that he will remain for seven years or he will remain for nine years and then the Muslims will, pr- he will obviously pass away and the Muslims will read his namaz janazah upon him. So that is that narration. Apart from this war, this war against the Sufyani, there is going to be another war. And this war is known as Malhamatul Kubra, Malhamatul Udma. It is known as the Great War. It is known as the Armageddon. The Great War that will occur. So it is going to take place at the time of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. And we can see the cause the reason behind this war from the following narration which is narrated by Hazrat Zee Mikhbar radiallahu anhu he says Satusalihuna ruma sulhan aminan you will have an agreement with the Romans you will have a peace treaty with them okay فَتَغْزُونَ أَنْتُمْ وَهُمْ عَدُوًا مِّنْ وَرَائِكُمْ you and them you will both fight an enemy behind you you will fight a common enemy so you and the Romans you're going to have a agreement there's going to be a peace treaty between you you are both going to combine and you are going to now fight a third party a common enemy the outcome of that war will be is that you are going to be successful you will win that war and you will gain beauty from that war and you will be free from difficulties calamities from further wars for a while and then you will return until you descend upon green fields with mounds with hills and then when you reach this place what's going to happen is that a person from the Nasrani from the Christians what is he going to do he's going to raise the cross and what is he going to say he's going to say that the cross has conquered i.e. we won this war against this third party against this common enemy why because of this cross the reason for our victory was the cross now when a person from the muslims is going to hear about this or he will hear this claim of this christian he's going to get angered by this and he is going to destroy that cross and he is going to say uh, he, he obviously he'll say that no the reason for our victory is because of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will be at this time where the Romans, they will go uh, against their deal. They will act treacherously and they will gather for the great war. And it is mentioned that there will be so many people in this war that is mentioned in one narration that there will be 80 flags and under each flag there will be 12,000 people 
So if you were to times 80 by 12,000, any mathematicians in here? 90, yes, 960,000 people. So a close to a million people will gather against the Muslims and they will fight against the Muslims. Okay, now we go into a few narrations describing this great war. So it is mentioned in one place that one time they blew a red storm in Kufa and a man, he would not have any catchphrase except he would say, Ya Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Ja'at is Sa'a. The final hour has come. So whenever he would see something unusual, whenever he would see something that would worry him, this person, his only catchphrase would be, okay, the Qiyamah has come. It is ju judgment day now. The last hour is going to occur right now. So when he saw this red sandstorm, red storm, okay, he thought, you know what? It's Qiyamah. And he runs to Hadrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and he says the final hour has occurred. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he was sat, he was leaning. Then he says, the final hour will not occur. لا تقوم حتى لا يقسم ميراث ولا يفرح بغنيمة Until two things. Number one, until inheritance is not distributed. And until booty does not make a person happy. What is the meaning of this? We will understand this at the end of the narration. And then Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he pointed towards Sham towards the area of Syria and he said that there will be an enemy from that area that will gather against the Muslims and the Muslims will gather against them so the sub narrator asks the person who heard this he says that you are you referring to the Romans so he said yes the Romans will be your enemies they are the one that are going to gather against you okay and they will be a very terrible war and what is going to happen so this is the great war we are talking about so, at this great war, the Muslims will send one detachment, one military unit. And this military unit will go and they will go that لا ترجعوا إلا غالبا We will not return except, we, except that we are victorious. Or number two, للموت Either we are going to return victorious or we are going to die trying. That is their condition. They will go and fight against the Romans. What happens is they will fight until the night intervenes between them. And both parties will return, but neither will be victorious. But that first detachment of Muslims that was sent, they will be wiped out. They will be finished. A second, on the second day, again another detachment will advance towards the Romans. And again they will go with the same condition. Either we are going to fight till we die or we will return when we are victorious. So they will go and they will fight until the night intervenes between them. And again, neither party, neither the Muslims or the Romans, they will have be victorious. But that group that set out in the morning, they will be wiped out. The third day, the same thing is going to happen. Another group is going to go with the same condition. They will fight again until the evening. Okay, neither party will be victorious. Now on the fourth day it is said that the remaining Muslims they will stand and they will advance towards the Romans. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant victory to the Muslims on that fourth day and they will fight the Romans in such a manner, they will kill them in such a manner that it has such a killing and such a war and such a, a fight has never been displayed before, such a war has never been seen before. And it is said that they, this, uh, you know, the killing will be so great that if a bird was to fly over their flanks, was to fly over that area, it would not be able to surpass that area to surpass their flanks except that that bird will fall dead it will fall dead due to the stench of the bodies or it will fall dead why because of the long distance it would have to cover i.e there will be a long distance of just dead bodies everywhere that bird will not be able to cover that distance in one flight except it would die except it would die naturally so either two it would die due to the stench and due to the great number of dead bodies. So 
both meanings refer to the fact that there will be a great number of deaths okay then they will count at the end of the war they will count the sons of one father who at the start of the war there were 100 people but now when they count at the end of the war there will only be one of them remaining from a hundred of the same father meaning not necessarily 100 sons of the same father meaning one family at the start of the war there was a hundred of them but at the end of this war there will only be one this is where Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he says with which booty will a person be happy with and what inheritance will be distributed meaning if there's only going to be one person left from that whole family who is he going to share that inheritance with there will be nobody to share that inheritance with and when all his family members have died his dad has passed away his brother has passed away his cousins his friends have all been martyred in the war no matter how great the beauty of that war will be it will not make him happy he will be saddened by the loss of his family members when they are distributing this wealth and they are in this state they will hear of a calamity even greater than this and a cry will come they will hear a cry that the Dajjal has appeared and he is present amongst their family members so they will leave everything they have in their hand and they will return to their families and they will send 10 horsemen as spies and the Prophet ﷺ says that even from now I know the name of them ten horsemen. I know the names of their fathers. I know the name, I know the colour of their horses. And they will be the best of the horsemen present at the time. We, there's a few more narrations left. There's about 15 minutes left in Maghrib as well. So unfortunately we're going to have to go 15 more minutes. I do apologize but Maghrib time is very close as well so that way we all remain in the masjid for Maghrib as well. So inshallah just 10 more minutes today and just whilst we're at the topic as well next week inshallah Asr Salah will be at 6.45. So next week will be our last talk regarding Imam Mahdi alayhi salam inshallah that's why I want to do a little bit more today as well. So last, next week will be the last talk regarding Imam Mahdi and next week uh, Asr Salah will be at 6.45 so please make note of that. So this is one narration that has detailed the great war, the Malhamatul Kubra, Malhamatul Udma, that will take place at the time of Imam Mahdi, the Armageddon. Okay, such a great war that if a bird was to fly over their flanks, it would die dead. Such a great war that there will be 80 flags that will come against the Muslims and under each flag there will be 12,000 people meaning 960,000 people will come to oppose the Muslims at the time so this is the first narration that we had regarding this great war there is one more narration which I would like for you guys to listen to as well which describes this great war that will occur at this time Prophet ﷺ said that the final hour will not occur until the Romans descend in Amak or Bidabik. So these are two cities, Amak and Dabik. They are on the Turkey or Syria borderline. So the border region of Turkey and Syria, Amak and Dabik. So the final hour will not occur until the Romans they descend in Amak or Dabik. Okay, and a army will come forth towards them from Medina. This Medina, it can possibly mean Medina Munawwara, the city of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. On number two, Medina literally means city, so it's referring to another city, and we can see it's pos possibly that could mean Damascus, Dimash. As it, as it is mentioned in another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said that the camp of the Muslims at the time of the Great War will be Ghuta. It is an area next to a great city, Dimashq, the best of cities in Sham. So this army will come from Medina, either Medina Munawwara or some other city. And they will oppose the Romans. They will be the best people on the earth at the time. And when they will get in their rows ready to fight, the Romans will say, step aside. Let us fight with those subu minna. 
those who were upon our religion but now they have left our religion and they have accepted Islam step aside and let us fight them so the Muslims will say no we are not going to step aside if you want to fight, fight us so now there will be a fight between the two armies the Romans and the Muslims and one third of the Muslims will be defeated they will flee from the war they will run away one third one third of the Muslims they will be martyred and they will be the best martyrs in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will be the remaining third and it is for the remaining third that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will declare successful and they will be successful and they will conquer Constantinia. we'll get to this as well inshallah now when they are distributing so they have defeated the Romans and now they are distributing the booty from the war it is at this time where shaitan will give a cry and he will say that the jal has emerged he is present amongst your family members but that cry will be a false cry and there is a little bit left of that narration but that you know it's not referring to Imam Mahdi so this is the great war between the Muslims and the Romans and at the end of this war there will be another conquest and that is the conquest of Constantinople and Constantinople is today known as Istanbul okay Constantinople known as Istanbul so the Prophet وسلم, in one place he said that have you heard of a city one side of it is in the water and one side of it is on land so the Sahaba Ikram says, yes, we have heard about this city. So the Prophet ﷺ said that you will, the Qiyamah will not occur until 70,000 people from Bani Ishaq do not attack this area, do not attack this city. Okay, now one thing to note, that Constantinople, okay, Istanbul, today it is already in the hands of the Muslims. So what does it mean that before the end of time it will be attacked again, it will be conquered again? When it has already been conquered in May 1453 by the Ottomans, until today it is still in the hands of the Muslims. So there are two possibilities for this. Number one is, the simple meaning is that before the end of time Istanbul will be conquered by the non-Muslims, it will go out of the hands of the Muslims and then before again in the time of Imam Mahdi they will reconquer it again so before the end of times the non-Muslims will conquer Istanbul and at the time of Imam Mahdi it will be conquered again by him or number two Constantinople is not referring to the city of Istanbul it is actually referring to the headquarters of the non-Muslims at the time because the reason the Prophet has mentioned Constantinople because Constantinople was the headquarters, was the capital of the non-Muslims at the time of the Prophet So the Prophet is saying, you will conquer the headquarters of the non-Muslims at the time. So both meanings. So Prophet said that the final hour will not occur until 70,000 people. 70,000 people from the children of Ishaq, they do not attack this city, Constantinople. And when they go to the city and they descend, they will not fight with hatyat, they will not fight with weapons, they will not shoot arrows. How will they conquer this area of Constantinople? Listen to this, subhanallah. قَالُوا لَا إِلَٰهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ فَيَسْقُدُوا أَحَدُ جَانِبِيهَا all they will say is La ilaha illallah wallahu akbar They will take the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And one side of that city will fall And the sub narrator says That I think it was the city uh, It was that side of the city that's in the water So they will just say the name of Allah On one side of the city will fall The second time they will say La ilaha illallah wallahu akbar And the second side of that city will fall they will say, La ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, for the third time, and the gates of that city will be opened. And then, they will not have to fight with weapons, that area will be conquered. And they will gain the booty, and it is while they are gaining the booty, there will be a cry that the Jal has appeared. So, we learn 
that at the time of Imam Mahdi, there will be, number one, a peace treaty between the Romans and the Muslims. However, when they kill their common enemy, the non-Muslims will say, we became victorious. Why? Because of the cross. It was the cross that inspired us. It was because of the cross. But the Muslim will say no. And that will cause a great war between the Muslims and the Romans and the Christians. And we have mentioned this great war. But at the end of it, the Muslims will be victorious. And then following this victory against the Romans, they will now conquer Constantinople. They will conquer Istanbul. And that is you know, the story that we needed to learn today. Just one last narration regarding this matter. Is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Al Malhamatul al Kubra wa Fath al Qustantinia wa Khuruj al Dajjal fi sabati ashhur." That the Malhamatul al Kubra, the Great War, the conquest of Constantinople of Istanbul, and the emergence of the Dajjal will all occur in the space of seven months. That is one narration, and the second narration says, "Bain al Malhamati." وفتح المدينة ست سنين ويخرج المسيح الدجال في السابعة that between the great war and the conquest of Medina the city i.e. Constantinople there will be six years and Dajjal will emerge in the seventh year so one narration says seven months and the other says all of this will occur in seven years but what we have to understand the deeper meaning is the first narration which is referring to seven months is talking about the end of the war so from the time frame between the end of the war and the conquest of Constantinople and the emergence of the Jal all of that from the end of the war will occur in seven months but from the start of this great war till the emergence of the Jal there will be seven years so this war will take place over a long period of time it is in fact going to be a very great war may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to remember whatever has been uh, remembered may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us or make our descendants whoever is present from our descendants at the time may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them from the family members of imam mahdi and his army